We have on the phone Kim Smith, who's the executive director of the South Sound Parent to Parent. How are you doing today, Kim? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm awake. I'm awake. So um, (laughs) for people who are not familiar, what exactly is the South Sound Parent to Parent? South Sound Parent to Parent is a nonprofit organization, and we support families who are raising children or caring for um, adult children with developmental disabilities and delays. So that's a very broad a broad overview of what we do. And I am very happy to go into detail if you'd like. Well, yeah, I think uh, for some people listening, they might need a little detail because they might go, well, what exactly is that? Yeah. So um, I will kind of go in order of our largest programs. Um, we are the the early intervention service provider agency for Grays Harbor, Mason County, and Thurston County. And what that means is we're the point of entry for any child in the birth to three age range who um, a parent or a physician or whoever might have a concern that they're not quite on track with their developmental milestones. And we get referrals from pretty much those sources. We get a lot of referrals from doctors. Um, we get referrals from the foster care system. Um, more and more what we have seen is parents are doing their own research and they find us and so they can do self-referral. And so if there's any concern about a little one, um, they can contact us. And we have staff who are called family resources coordinators. And that pretty much is as it sounds. They coordinate resources for families. Um, And what they do is they will go out and do an initial home visit with a family in normal times. (laughs) We do in-home visits. Um, And they will kind of sit down and do an interview with the family, find out what their concerns are, um, just kind of get a global overview. And then they come back and they team with, our home visitors, um, if it's a child who has a motor concern, we have physical therapists and we're adding an occupational therapist in July. We have two speech therapists and a speech therapy assistant. And then we have special ed, special education teachers, um, home visitors, just a whole host of people who then they get together, they talk about you know, what the family resources coordinator has um, received from the family, that information, and then they determine along with the family whether or not they'll move forward and actually uh, do an evaluation of the child. And in early intervention, one of the great things is that we, we evaluate in all areas of development. So if a, if a family calls and they have you know, concern about communication, we're also going to be looking at social-emotional health. We're going to be looking at um, their motor skills, their cognitive skills, uh, just everything. And we we really like to approach everything from a really a global and a holistic perspective. So we're not only evaluating the child based on the concerns, but also in that initial time and ongoing, trying to support the family and you know, as they're trying to raise a child who potentially has a, a disability. Um, and that program falls under early support for infants and toddlers, which is um, the lead agency for the state for early intervention for the state of Washington. And they are housed under the Department for Children, Youth, and Families. So we have kind of this large structure that defines the legal aspects of what we do, because if a child is found eligible, they move forward into what is called an Individual Family Service Plan, an IFSP. And that outlines, you know, what the services will be. Um, It takes into great consideration always what the family wants. We are very family-driven and family-led. And um, 
that allows everything to kind of be in a structure that also allows for just tracking of data and being able to ensure that our team is doing everything appropriately under the law. And then we have um, we have a lot of uh, individual approaches based on what the family and the child needs are. So once a child is on that service plan, then they have a whole team of folks that are serving them. Um, the family resources coordinators ensure that the family is getting everything that they need. They help to arrange all of the services, and then, you know, the services are ongoing until either the child turns three or until such a time as um, the services aren't needed any longer. So it just kind of depends on which comes first. And under that structure, we work very closely with the area school districts, because once a child is close to their third birthday, the school district will do a whole new evaluation to determine whether or not they need ongoing services after they are done with us. So that's just kind of a, a brief snapshot of the early intervention process. So and, how, how did the organization ahead. form? Say that again, please. How did the organization form? The organization formed um, back in 1987, so we have been around for a very long time, and it was it was formed by it was really a grassroots effort, and it was formed by parents who had children with disabilities, and they really realized that um, there was nobody else who knew what it was like to raise a child with a, a disability than another parent who has that same experience. So that's where the name comes from, parent to parent. Um, and so those folks, one of whom is now on our board all these years later, which is great, um, they got together and they really, they created this organization. They um, became a nonprofit and it's just been going on ever since and growing. Uh, just It's grown a lot. So, that initial program, kind of that cornerstone of what we do, is our Helping Parent program. And that's also everything, again, everything is based in um, what the families want, what what is needed for parents, and they are really the driving force behind everything we do. So under the Helping Parent program, we have, um, we have one-on-one Helping Parent matches, so we have, I think currently we have 69 trained helping parents. They go through a state-approved training curriculum. And then that allows those kind of, uh, I guess, veteran parents, the ones that have been doing this for a long time, to be, act as mentors for the newer families that are coming in and sort of seeking support and guidance from people who have lived through the exact same thing that they are currently going through. And also part of the the Helping Parent Program, we provide um, recreational activities. We provide educational opportunities. Um, We have uh, opportunities for support groups, and we have several of those. We have um, one that's called Mom to Mom. We have one that's called Dad to Dad. We have one that is called Sib Shops, and those are Sib Shops is for the siblings of kids with disabilities, and uh, that's really important for those kids to be able to get together and just sort of talk and share with each other what their challenges and oftentimes joys are with their siblings. And then we have out in uh, out in our Grace Harbor County area, we have a uh, a parent support group that's meeting on. Tuesdays from 11 to 12, virtually, of course, right now. But So that's kind of the foundation and, and the history of the organization and how it came up. So how long have you been involved, and what sort of expertise do you bring to uh, the organization? I just celebrated my 17th anniversary with the organization. Um, I came to it, I was a... <laughs> I was an old college student, and um, when I was going through my um, practicum work, 
back in 2002, I was introduced to Parent to Parent by uh, the person that I was working with at Head Start. And um, when I started out, I started out as a family resources coordinator, and I did that for seven years. And in 2010, I became the executive director of the organization. And what I bring to that, I mean, I have, uh, I raised three children who are in their 30s now. And um, I had a, a great deal of experience working with families. My passion is really around families. And my background is in child development youth development and family services and uh, human services as well. So I have um, I have a, a bachelor's and a master's in those various fields. And uh, this agency has been just, it's been part of my world for 17 years. And other than my, my husband and my children and my now grandchild, I, uh, pretty much devote my time to the work that we do and very, very passionate about the work that we do for families. Okay, let's say my wife and I have a child with developmental disabilities and we come to your office for a first visit. And I know that we're talking here just in generalities, but kind of walk me through what my first, I guess, initiation with the agency would be like. So are we talking about a child who's in birth to three or an older child? Birth to three. Say I have a very young child. So a pretty young child. In, again, back pre-pandemic, you likely would not come to an office. We would come to you. Um, The the, um, ideology around early intervention is that we really want everything to occur in the natural environment where the child spends most of their time. So um, you would call and you would be assigned a family resources coordinator and that person would come to your home if you were okay with that. Some families, they don't, they don't want to do that. And so there are times when we will meet at a library or um, someplace else that the family is comfortable. So occasionally they'll come to the office, but not, not too often. Um, so the family resources coordinator would come to your house uh, they would really they would sit down and ask you a, a whole series of questions to get to know you, to get to know you know what your um, what your concerns are for your child, uh, which we really want to approach things from a strength based position. So they're going to really find out what's going what's going well, and then what are the challenges so that we can we know which you know what to focus on. So um, you would sign releases to allow us to evaluate, and then that family resources coordinator, I'm going to start saying FRC, (laughs) it's easier. Uh, The FRC would then go back and team with the the different specialists that we have, and then we would put together a team that would come out and do the evaluation process with you, which as a parent you would be very involved in because the parents are absolutely the primary um, expert on their child. They're the ones who are with them all the time. And so, um, so much of what we do in the evaluation process is parent report, um, obser- observation also, obviously, by the specialist, but there's so much that we can't see in an hour that you can, as a parent, inform, you know, the, the evaluators about. So that's what that whole initial process would look like. Okay, so... I mean, all right, now you've given an overview of some of your programs, but could you, I guess, maybe describe the multitude of programs and maybe give a few more specifics? Well, let's see. With early intervention, like I said, um, we we would move through that evaluation process if the child was eligible, and there are all sorts of criteria that the state has set that, that will make a child eligible. We have um, the ability to make a kiddo eligible based on uh, there are about 700 automatic qualifiers. And then based on the testing as well, we would look and see, you know, if the child was eligible. So let's say the child's eligible. And 
um, they are eligible in, let's say, communication. And the parents have concerns about communication, so we're definitely going to address that. We would create goals. <clears throat> They're called outcomes. And, excuse me, we would, um, we would work on those. And that might be, look like a speech therapist coming into the home on a regular basis. It could be a speech therapist coming once a month and a home visitor carrying out, you know, the, the in program the rest of the time. It just really depends. And again, it's so individualized based on the needs of the family. So in addition to the therapies that go on for the child, in the early intervention program, again, the, the family is so much a focus because a child living inside a home, we want to make sure that the, that home and the, the, the parents, the children, that everybody is really supported because that's going to really lead to the best possible outcome for this little one who has a delay or a disability. So we may, um, you know, if we have a family that's really struggling financially, we may be able to bring financial support. Um, we bring diapers. You know, we have a team I'll talk about Grace Harbor County, we've got an amazing team of, of people out there who it's it's really a, a no stone unturned type of a thing. So they will, you know, they'll find resources for the families. They'll find if there's energy assistance needed or they need food or they need diapers or there's housing issues. They really, they really work to support the family as a whole. So that's, it's just such a holistic approach. It's hard to really get specific because it is so individualized uh, based on what the family's needs are. And we do have out there, we have contracted speech therapists, um, we have occupational therapists, and then we also have a, an office, our, our sort of our largest office is in the Olympia area, and we have a physical therapist there who she travels out to Grace Harbor to help support families out there as well. So um, specifics are a little bit tricky with, with uh, early intervention just because we really try to make sure that it's very individualized based on each family. So when it comes to other programs, i give some examples of um, recreational activities. So um, our staff out there, they did an ice cream social for families just so that they can get together and connect with one another. So that's a that's a, a huge goal of ours, and it's um, it's been one that has been standing since 1987. Is that families who are raising children with disabilities often feel really isolated, and so this current time, which we'll talk a little bit more about, um, has just kind of exacerbated that situation. But one of our main goals is to get families together so that they can be social um, and reduce that sense of isolation and really support each other. So as many social activities as we can put together, we try to do that. So, um, you know, again, ice cream social, we have the parent groups, we have parent toddler groups out there when things are open. Um, we do in different locations, kind of depending on what's available, we'll do um, uh, the hands-on children's museum in, in the Olympia area. Um, we have families who go to Skateland or um, just various social activities and, and fun events that families can enjoy together without that um, often that that nervousness that somebody is going to be upset if their child acts out because everybody's kids are pretty much in the same boat, so they're they're able to support each other and just have fun together and not worry. Um, I think we'll see. Well, let, let's talk I'm a little. To think more specific. Yeah. Well, I was going to say let's talk a little bit about the pandemic because every nonprofit yeah. that we have had on over the past month, their services or the delivery of their services has been greatly impacted by the stay home, stay healthy order. So how has that impacted the delivery of services that you provide to these many families? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to start by saying that over the years, um, 
I have kind of given challenges to our staff, and I've always said that this team of people, and there are 41 of us now, um, this team of people always not only rises to the occasion, but they blow my expectations out of the water every single time. And this is no different. We closed our doors physically on March 11th because we had a, um, a staff member who had a, a presumed positive COVID-19 test turned out to be negative, thankfully. But we basically, with no notice, just like everyone else, we shut the doors. And this team of people, all of them, they jumped in and suddenly we were providing virtual therapy to our early intervention families. And suddenly we were providing virtual support groups to our helping parent families. And not only the regular support groups, but adding support groups. So we've added out in Grace Harbor, the, the, um, the parent support group out there that's on Tuesdays from 11 to 12. Everything's on Zoom. We have increased the number of support groups. So instead of doing things once a month in person, everything's happening weekly so that people are getting as much support as they possibly can. And it is incredibly challenging. I mean, you can only spend so much time staring at a computer screen, um, but they're making it happen. And we've been really incredibly well supported by the communities as well. Um, we were a recipient of a um, Seattle Foundation Paragee Fund grant for $15,000 that it has allowed us to purchase uh, tablets for families who don't have Internet devices or We've used it to get <clears throat> like little tripods for iPhones so that parents can be at home and they can set everything up. And then our, our home visitors, our therapists, all of our providers, they can be on the other end of that computer on Zoom or whatever platform the family is comfortable with. And we're, we're using all sorts of different platforms. They can be there really guiding what the family is doing. And in the early intervention world, because, you know, there's an old saying that somebody said a long time ago that therapy happens between therapy appointments. Because so much of what we do is about parent coaching so that the parents continue to be the expert for their child, this is truly putting that into practice because they're there, they are, you know, they're on one end of that computer and they're doing everything with their child that the therapist is, is helping guide and coach them through. And so it's um, it's it's been pretty phenomenal to see. I mean, we I I think that maybe we had a week of downtime before everything started jumping back up, and you know the other things that have happened. We have um, we have a staff member and well several staff members who said you know let's let's create a YouTube channel. So now we have this YouTube channel where. We have examples of what does a home visit look like normally, you know, or what does it look like now virtually? What does an evaluation look like? And, you know, here, we're going to read some stories. Here are some craft ideas and things like that so that um, we can let families know, here's something you can watch in preparation for what we're going to do, which then hopefully reduces the amount of time they have to be on the computer, because that's hard. It's hard to hold the attention of little children <laughs> for any length of time, much less in front of a screen. Um, and so I just, I cannot stress enough how uh, proud I am to be part of this organization and how impressed I am with this team of people who have found every which way to try and get services to families in a really, really difficult time. Well, I would think... Um from what you've described, that you've learned some valuable lessons going forward, that sooner or later we're going to get out of this pandemic. I mean, maybe one year, it may be two years, but mm -hmm. you've probably discovered some new tools that you can use going forward into the future. 
That is absolutely true. I mean, one of the things that we we have talked about for a couple of years, being able to do virtual therapy or vir- virtual support groups, and and you know, we have families that live between Thurston, Mason, and Grace Harper counties. We have some people that are in really rural areas, and it's sometimes challenging to find therapists who will go out into some of the far reaches of these different communities. And so we will we will retain some of this. We will definitely continue to do teletherapy as a you know as a supplement to home visits once we're able to go back. And and I know that the plan is to continue some of the virtual support groups because it's really um, it's challenging for people to get out. You know, if you've got if you've got kids at home and it's your mobility issues or health issues, we've got kids with chronic health issues. Those are those are it's tricky for those families to get out to our physical support groups. So we'll continue to do some of those virtually as well. So um, there are definitely there have been some silver linings that we have discovered through all of this, and we'll continue. We'll continue to use. Another thing, and I know this deals more with maybe a predominantly older age group, but trying to explain the pandemic so that it is understandable to someone with developmental disabilities. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. look, let's let's be honest. It's, it's hard for just us average folk to wrap our heads around. But, you know, people who need touch – you know, and, and are encouraged to uh, interact and, and uh, engage others. And now all of a sudden there's this separating. And I know when I talked to the people at the Ark of Grades Harbor, they said that it is it presents a great challenge to try to explain this in ways that people with developmentally uh, disabilities can grasp. Yeah, uh, that's. Absolutely true. We have, um, I mentioned the YouTube channel that we've created and we've put things on there that are, you know, social stories to try to help older kids understand. But it is, it's really, it's difficult. It's difficult for us. It's difficult for the grownups. It's difficult for the kids. Um, We've heard from some families who have kids in some of our other support groups that the, um, that it's, there's so much stress at home that doing one more thing is challenging. So we're, we just are trying to give everybody as much grace as we possibly can. And I mean that about my own staff as well as the families that we support and just trying to make it okay for people to do what they need to do for themselves right now. And knowing that we're here um, we're not going anywhere. Our supports are in place, and um, you know, just 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 trying to make it as easy as we can on everybody. Like again, including my own team of folks. So uh, it's challenging. It's really hard. It's a hard time. So, is yours the, uh, the type of organization that makes use of volunteers? Our helping parents are all volunteers. So that the that sixty nine number that I talked about earlier um, of our helping parents, they are all volunteers, and right now they're more important than ever. Um, They're always very important, but just being able to connect people with them is uh, really crucial because, again, as we, you know, our, our goal, one of our many goals is to reduce isolation, and right now we're also isolated, so I, you know, that's, we want to make sure that people get connected and um, have the supports in place that they need, not just from our staff, but from also from those parents that have years and years of experience raising a, a child with a disability. So um, I, I hope that people will continue to reach out for those supports. So in other words, it sounds like you're saying, though, that you maybe get your volunteers from people who've been with the program. It wouldn't be from someone coming outside the program maybe who had never had a child with developmental disabilities and just thought, that sounds like a cool group. I'd like to go volunteer. (laughs) 
We we do during during non pandemic times. We do have people who come in and they volunteer um, and they help with various you know office things. If we're putting together a new um, a new data system or something like that, we have people who come in. But by and large, our volunteers are people who have experience with the disabilities world. Um, and again, because we are supporting people who um, have such a unique situation and for for your average person who's going to come in and has absolutely no idea what that's like um, I will I will tell you as the executive director of the organization I don't have a child with a disability I don't even pretend to understand what our families are experiencing um, I just want to make sure that I've got people in place who do and luckily I have a really amazing staff, our helping parent coordinator. Um, she she knows our families so, so well, so she knows which families to to seek out to become helping parents to be part of that volunteer team. Um, we have we have our our outreach coordinator who is just just working so hard to try to make sure that everybody knows that we're still here and that um, we're providing services. We have a development director who's writing grants and getting funding so that we can continue to support people during this really difficult financial time as well. I mean, now we've got the added financial burdens on things. And, And while I say that, I do, I really want to acknowledge that we have had um, incredibly generous support over the years from the uh, the Grace Harbor Community Foundation. They have just been a tremendous support, and they're allowing us to continue to get services out to Grace Harbor specifically. So that was going to lead to my very next question: How uh, is Parent to Parent funded? We are funded. We have a pretty broad uh, funding base. Um, we receive funds from the Department for Children, Youth, and Families through the that Early Support for Infants and Toddlers program. Um, we receive some county funding um, for Thurston and Mason County. Um, we receive a really large portion of our funding for the Early Intervention Program comes from the school districts right now. And legislation passed recently that will shift funds from special education through the school district system directly over to the Department for Children, Youth, and Families. So it'll be more of a streamlined process. Um, And then we have, uh, we get funding from the ARC of Washington, from the state for the Helping Parent Program. And then we have a lot of grant funding. And um, again, we have, you know, our our development director's been real busy and we've received uh, lots of, lots of really substantial grants to help support services, to help support the Helping Parent Program, and then additionally to make sure that families right now are getting whatever devices they need to be able to access services. So whether those are tablets or cell phones or um, actual Internet and hotspots and that sort of thing. So we're, we're doing all of those things right now. And... Um, different foundations. I mean, the Community Foundation of South Sound, as well as the the Grace Harbor Community Foundation, um, have been really, really supportive of our organization and of the work that we do over the years. Well, do you accept contributions just from individuals? Somebody says, oh, this sounds like a great program. I would like to give X amount of dollars. (laughs) Yes, we would take it. Um, Our website at, which is uh, www.ssp2, it's the number two, uh, p.org. We've got a donation button that's right on the front page there. Um, we also do fundraising activities. We have a fundraising event every year in February. It's called Champions of Courage. We just had, just before all of this started, right at the very end of February, um, we had our big Champions of Courage event, which is, um, it's just a wonderful fundraising event. It's at the Hands-On Children's Museum in Olympia. And what I love so much about it is that it 
it brings in not only the families that we serve, but also community members who come in. And we try to make it a really fun night and very um, child-focused, obviously being in the museum. And we have live and silent auctions. And it's just a, it's a fun, fun time. And it's a way to not only raise some funds to support the Helping Parent Program, but it also... Um, increases awareness. And that's one of the things that we try so hard to do with everything is to create awareness that we are here. We've been here for a long time. We will continue to be here and to please make contact if you are needing support. Um, we hear too often still, you know, oh, I, I didn't, I never heard of this agency. And my sort of thought is you're probably not going to hear about an agency for kids with disabilities unless you are experiencing that or if you're somebody who needs to make a referral. So um, things like this, the, this radio program and, and the different fundraisers we do and all of the outreach that we do is just to get the word out there because it just, it breaks my heart when I find out that people have gone without services for a length of time just because they didn't know where to go. So the more that we can we can spread awareness, the better. So why don't you share with us now all the various ways people can either contact or connect with um, South Sound Parent to Parent? Mm-hmm. So our website, again, which is www.ssp, the number two, p.org. And that website has a ton of information. It talks about all of the different services and um, just every service that we offer. And it will give you a, a great idea of who our staff is. There's a contact us page and you can see, you know, who the faces of the people that would be working in your particular area. Um, we have a South Sound Parent to Parent Facebook page that is very, very active and has been um, super active during this pandemic time, and our outreach coordinator keeps that updated, well, multiple times a day. So there's information about um, just all of the things going on with COVID-19. There's ideas for what families can be doing. You know, just a, There's just so much stuff on there. Um, we have a South Sound Parent to Parent Instagram and, um, and again, that, that YouTube site, the YouTube channel is Go to YouTube and it's South Sound Parent to Parent and lots of fun ideas on there. And there's, there's again, there's examples of an evaluation. There's example of different things you can do with your kids at home. Everything from, you know, our physical therapist, she did a great job with her own kids of showing how you can kind of make a fun um, obstacle course in your house to keep kids busy and keep those motor skills going well you know, all the way to different staff members reading stories. And then we have, you know, a craft time and different different ideas for crafts at home. So um, there's a lot of different ways. And then also you can, you can call us. We're starting to uh, have a, people in to the buildings like a, just a couple of days a week and very, very, very limited. But um, – I would share the Grace Harbor number is 360-637-8586. And our main office where we would do any birth to three intakes, that number is 360-352-1126. And anybody who has any questions is very welcome to email me directly and again, my name is Kim Smith, and my email address is ksmith at ssp2p.org. And where is the Grays Harbor office located? The Grays Harbor office is located at the mall, the shops at Riverside Mall. And um, the address there is 1017 South Boone Street, and we're in number 309 so we're there in the mall along with other social services agencies and um, hopefully that will open up soon I don't you know obviously none of us knows when that'll happen but that's where they're located is it close to the go-karts 
Uh, yeah, I think so. I think if you go in that door, it's just down past the, uh, like you go through the little food court and it's down in there. Well, you see, you could go meet, then, uh, like if you maybe had to wait for something, go race around the go-kart track two or three times and then go <laughs> back. Know. Race <laughs> go-karts and snacks. That's right. So is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to share or mention? I think that the only thing that I would like to say is that um, for anybody listening to this or anybody who's interested in participating in the Helping Parent Program or knows somebody, just please spread the word. That's, That's my... That's my biggest goal with this is to ensure that families who have any kind of concerns or need support that they can, they know that they can reach out, that we are open in a different way right now, but we are open and serving families and we just don't want anybody to go without because they don't know. So um, just please put the word out there. Okay, we've been speaking with Kim Smith, Executive Director of South Sound Parent to Parent, and we thank you for coming on, and maybe in a few months we'll have you back. Thank you so much, Trey. I appreciate it.